McClure Publishing Incorporated, Vendor, Booth Etiquette. Set a budget first. Be realistic. This course will reveal different ways to set up your booth. Draw people over, different payment methods, PayPal, practice signing your book, eating at your booth, receipt book, engaging potential customers, and positioning yourself at your booth. It all seems really easy to take items to lay out your vendor booth. It takes a creative individual to have a unique style. Your booth should attract people. There are certain items that go along with your book that would really help the display. Once an attendee approaches your booth, they should meet someone that is approachable. Accepting payments of all major credit cards, checks, and cash are very vital to your booth etiquette. Keeping track of sales is another asset to your business as an author. Have two different sign-in, sign-up sheets for those who stop by your booth. Vendor booth displays. I have seen several displays that I would like to display at my booth. Most times, the cost of each display determines what best fits my budget. First time authors more than likely have a budget and cannot afford a costly display. So you improvise. You do what is more cost effective. Items that you might have on display are a tablecloth, a backdrop of your image, and a front book cover design, a blow up board that contains book information, the books that you are selling, flyers, business cards, bookmarks, postcards, and whatever else you can add to the table to encourage customers to purchase your book. Keep it simple and less cluttered. Remember, less on a vendor table is better. You can always place the books that you are going to sign under your table to retrieve once a customer purchase your book. Godfrey Group it is very impressive when one can order a vendor booth display from GodfreyGroup.com, which is a Gallo company. Godfrey Group has displays for office lobbies, modular system, portable displays, inspiration, custom display, and fabric architecture. The exhibits are amazing. One can find Godfrey Group displays at trade shows, sales events, lobby decor, video signage, and at retail environments. It is endless. Attracting customers. Think about what customers may look for in a display. Certain colors are attractive, gadgets, sound effects, and video footage. What I also have at my booth are individually wrapped delicious candy and peppermints that would draw attendees to the booth. Once they get there, my main goal is to sell my book, but I do not want to make it seem so obvious. I strike up a meaningful conversation to cause us to communicate. Then I sell what is inside my book while conversing with potential customers. The conversation helps me to be more aware of what customers are looking for in a product. Items on display. A theme. Have one. What is it that you want to demonstrate to those who walk past? Stand on the front side of the table. Some vendors have the table removed and they have their items on stands as if a customer is entering a store. The table can seem like a barrier that is blocking you from potential customers. You are an item that is not for sale. However, you should dress professionally, comfortably, or whatever you feel is attractive. Wear comfortable, attractive shoes because you should be standing for most of the day. Sometimes I will bring my black, taller, portable chair so that I can sit on the front side whenever I get tired of standing. Engaging attendees. One word of the day, positive statements and or giveaways are great conversational pieces and are great in engaging attendees. The giveaway should contain your business information, logo, or your company motto. 
Remember, your book is a product. So to have your front cover image displayed on a giveaway is ideal. Any display on the giveaway is according to what size it is. It is also best to have bags with your information displayed largely enough to have people who make a purchase carry your bag around, which is ultimately helping promote your product, which is your book. Vendor Booth Games Think of games that you can play with those who approach your booth. When playing games, be sure that it makes people laugh. A game that is pertaining to your brand and a game that will have the potential customer win something with your information on it is ideal. Even though you will play a couple of games, do not let it take over the main goal of your booth and that is to sell your product, which is your book. One can get caught up in the games that they forget the main reason to why they are there. Prizes. Bring raffle tickets so customers who make a purchase can enter a contest to win a prize at the event. One year I purchased jewelry and placed it on a beautiful jewelry box and had customers who purchased my book enter the raffle. Another year, I framed a fake $100 bill and had people who made a purchase enter a raffle to win a real one. There were certain times they had to stop by for the drawings. The customers had to be present in order to win. I would only pull one ticket at each drawing. If the person was not present, the customers would have to come back for the next drawing. This kept customers near my booth so others wanted to know what was going on at the booth. This gave me and my assistant a chance to sell more books. There was another time I couldn't afford to purchase $500 worth of a giveaway so I made my own. I placed lots of different chocolates in a small baggie and placed stickers of my business information on the bags and then gave them away with the purchase. Another time, I took small labels and stuck them to pens. I did whatever I could. Also, I would do B2B, business to business, with name brand stores to purchase gift cards to give away with the purchase of my book. The gift card was set for the 10th customer, 20th customer, and 30th customer. As the number increased, the gift card increased by five dollars. One time I took Mary Kay products and put lotions and sample packages inside a baggie with my business information on them and gave them away with the purchase. Not only did customers receive Mary Kay, they received my business information to contact me at a later date. Sometimes at vendor booth opportunities you do not sell any books. Do not let that discourage you. Sometimes business comes after the event. Continue smiling and keep your head up. Pricing your product. Keep your prices reasonable. Although the price on the book is printed, set a sale for the purchase of it. This is up to you. Factor in what it costs you to print and ship the book. Also, Think about what you spend for the vendor booth, marketing material, etc. You at least want to make two to five dollars per sale after the overhead has been covered. Once a customer makes a purchase, sign their book. First time authors may not think about the importance of signing their book. Practice signing. Whatever you write, keep the information short because of the line of customers that are waiting to purchase your book. Have the customer write their name on a post-it so that you will spell it correctly because certain names are spelled differently. Once you have sold a large amount of books, you may decide not to sign them. It is up to you. Payment system. Be sure that you have in place a system where you can accept all major credit cards. Keep track of all of your sales. Deposit money into one account that you use for your book business. This way you will be able to keep track of money coming in and money going out. Sidebar. 
start accepting credit card payments and debit card payments through your PayPal account and on your website in minutes. Setup is fast and easy. Check your PayPal account for more information. Setting up a PayPal account is important. Create a PayPal account at paypal.com. Be sure that you do this way in advance of your first event. This way, by the time of the event, everything will be in order for you to accept all major credit cards and checks. Download the PayPal app through your Play Store on your electronic device. Set up a bank account that will be associated with your PayPal account. You can transfer funds from PayPal to this account. According to how your bank accept PayPal transfers will determine how soon the funds will be available in your bank account. Instead of waiting for funds to be available and transfer funds to your bank account, order a PayPal MasterCard which can be used as an ATM card. Funds that you have in your PayPal account will be available on your PayPal MasterCard. Fees Please keep in mind that PayPal charge fees, which is a certain percentage of the amount of money you charge customers when you use your PayPal account. PayPal fees may be lesser than bank fees. Let customers know that there is a small fee and that the tax will be included in the price. Disclaimer. Seek tax information from your local government, accountant, and a tax preparer. This is an important part of the book business. McClure Publishing Incorporated does not offer tax information. What we do regarding taxes is submit to you a 1099 when we pay you $600 or more in royalty payments. With a PayPal Here account, you can take credit cards and debit card information over the phone, by email or fax. You can scan checks, keep track of cash payments, receive payment via mobile device, as I said earlier, and invoice customers right there on the spot or once you get to a place where you are a little more organized. In order to accept payments through your PayPal account while you are at an event, you must order the triangle, which some call a square, from PayPal, which is free. Download the PayPal app onto your electronic device and start listing the items you will be selling at the event along with the prices. On your electronic device, you can plug in the triangle, log on to your PayPal here account and scan major credit cards. After scanning the card through the triangle, be sure that you have the right email address of the customer in order to send them a paid receipt. Wi-Fi. It is important to be sure that your electronic device is working properly. Most times the Wi-Fi in a building kicks in automatically or you gain access through your phone's company service. Then there are times it does not work. Knowing the Wi-Fi login and passcode of that building you are in would help you have access to the internet on your electronic device. This is important, otherwise you will not be able to use your PayPal Here app. Receipts A couple of receipt books are important to have at your booth to give to customers for the sale and one for your records. Some customers do not have an email address, so to have hard copy receipts are ideal. This is what I like about PayPal. Once I receive the payment, PayPal will send a confirmation receipt to my customers who have an email address. I can keep track of the sale much better during tax season. You can also keep track of cash that you receive for your products through your PayPal account. If you do not have a PayPal account, the old-fashioned way works also. Only accept cash. Attendees information. Always have two sheets on clipboards or a column on the sheet that indicates if the person either purchased or did not purchase your book. I like to have two separate sheets. One sheet for those who purchased the book 
and a sheet for those who just stopped by. This information helps in future sales. Each sheet consists of a chart that has a heading such as name, email address, and phone number. On the sheet, type in bold print, print legibly. Sometimes people are rushing and are not legibly filling out the form. Later, when you are logging the information into a database, you cannot tell what was written. Purchasing Vendor Booth Space This is an important part of a vendor booth. It is somewhat similar to leasing space in a building. You must pay for it. The cost is determined by how much space you need. A vendor who needs less space should not have to pay the same amount of someone who needs a larger space. The cost is also determined by the amount of days a vendor would be renting the space. Certain vendor space rentals will require a certain percentage of what you sell. Stores want 40% while some vendor spaces only require 12%. This is important to know beforehand. Food. Always eat a healthy breakfast the morning of the event. Bring light, healthy snacks that you can nibble on throughout the day that would keep your energy level up during the event. Drink bottled water so that you will not dehydrate. You can always eat a great meal after the event. Now, it is always best to have an assistant or someone at the booth with you in case you need to take a break. Sidebar, people love to eat. If you are giving food away or candy at your booth along with a purchase, be sure it is fresh. Delicious cupcakes and Mama Picky's chocolate, which are similar to Pixies and Dixies from Fannie Mae, are nice giveaways. People can see them from a far distance. When customers find out they need to make a purchase in order to get one of either the Mama Picky's chocolate or the delicious cakes, they might give in and purchase one of your books. Advertising before, during, and after. Before the event. This is so key right here. Before a big event, you want others to know that you will be attending the event or displaying your material at the event. Pass out marketing materials such as postcards, bookmarks, and whatever you can to let potential customers know that you will be signing your book. On the marketing material you pass out, it should contain your professional photo, front book cover, ISBN, places your book can be purchased outside of the event, your vendor booth number, big and noticeable, contact information, and whatever else you want to add. Pass it out with a treat or something. Your team. It is always best to have a team that is prepared for a big event. The time of preparation is to coach your team on how to lure people over to your vendor booth. They should be dressed very attractive that causes others to take a look. When they approach people, the team should have a pitch that does not sound like a recorder. Sounding like a people person is ideal. They should be very cordial when sharing information about your book and express clearly the booth number that you are at. Periodically, throughout the day, the team should stop by the booth for more coaching and for follow-up communication. Have your team share with the potential customer that there is something they need at your booth. Once the potential customer gets to the booth, be sure they will find exactly what the team shared they will receive. Whatever item they will receive, let them know that it is free with the purchase of your book. Your main goal is to get your book sold. Do research pertaining to the market of the attendees that will be attending the event. This is called knowing your audience so that you do not dilute your marketing strategy. 
If you can be listed as a speaker that will deliver a message about your book during the event, sign up for it. It might cost a fee in order to have an allotted time for you to speak and to be listed on pre-event marketing material. In our course, Use Your Voice, we will cover ways to coach potential customers into buying your book, which is a product. There are methods and strategies in making a sale. It is similar to a car salesman who has so many ways to sell a car during the event stand up and be ready to engage those who approach your booth listen to what they are saying and answer them in short statements because you have to talk to so many people if you notice those who have approached your booth are not interested in making a purchase try not to talk to them as long as you would those who will make a purchase you want to remain friendly but you also want to stick to your goal and that is to sell your book. Let people know that while they are signing your sign in sign up sheet that you may be contacting them regarding upcoming events. Have the price of your book on display along with a sale of buy one get the other half off. Buy two get one free. Come up with sales tactics that will get your book sold. Your main purpose is to make a transaction. In other words, get your book into the consumer's hands. Keep in mind that attendees that are visiting the event will become your word of mouth to other attendees. When they see you have something great at your booth and it is something they need, they will share it with others about your booth. Be sure to share with those who approach your booth and those who made a purchase to tell others that you are there and what you have that will be beneficial to them. After the event, follow up with people who you gathered information on your sign in sign up sheet. Remember the ones who purchased your book versus those who just signed the sheet. Have a plan that when you contact them that it will not seem as if you are trying to sell them something. Continue to let them know that you are available and to keep you informed about events that they might have. Develop a professional relationship and stick to your brand image. When cold calling, speak about your book of what is inside that will benefit them. Become a storyteller that draws someone's attention. Capture them with a plot and a punchline. Create smaller events that you can invite others to, to get to know who your potential customers are. And be sure it is cost effective. Open the event for others to display and sell their products and services as well. Your main goal is to start the networking process and to continue increasing your net worth. Conclusion. Bottom line. How much money did you make from the event? There are some events that you will spend more than you make, while at other events you will make a profit. I like to keep track of my bottom line. You want to be in the book business as an author, so remember to keep track of your records. Your future depends on it. Although I have offered so much information, use your common sense and do what is best for you. Everyone is different and every personality is not the same. What works for me may not work for you. Experience is the best teacher. This brings me to our next course, Use Your Voice. This class will show you how to speak to your audience when speaking to them regarding your product and services and when you have said enough. We've covered setting up your booth, draw people over, different payment methods, PayPal, practice signing your book, eating at your booth, receipt book, engaging potential customers, and positioning yourself at your booth. Thanks for signing up for the six-week writing course. If you have any questions or comments, 
that you want to discuss offline, you may email us at McClurepublishing at MSN.com. Call us at 800-659-4908 or visit us on the web at www.McClurepublishing.com. This course was a great course in order for you to know how to act at your vendor booth. Your book is a product which should be sold. Since your book is a product, you have to sell it like a business. How you represent yourself, others will take note. Plan your appearances with locations, dates, times, and what you will do for each one. Be sure that it is exciting and that it amuse people that walk past. This way, you will have more of an opportunity to sell your book and get your book in the customer's hands. Thank you so much. Now the floor is open for questions and answers.